Many thanks to the Genealogy Center for having me this afternoon to talk about all things New York ancestors and the New York Genealogical and Biographical Society. Um, I, as, as Allison mentioned, I'm the president of the NYGNB, which means that I get to spend nearly every day of my life, uh, including some weekends, working on New York ancestors and tracing New York family history. And while, while we get started, uh, I cannot promise that I'm going to be able to answer and solve every single New York question or brick wall that you have in, in our short time together. Uh, what I am going to do is share with you some of the resources that the NYGNB offers that can help you to answer those New York questions, maybe find some records that you haven't necessarily heard of before, and reach out to the NYGNB as needed so that we as an organization can help you in your research. No one knows everything there is about New York. There's New York City, there's upstate New York, there's areas in Buffalo, there's the Canadian border. There's so many different types of, of research questions that come out when you're looking at New York. And the NYGNB aims to, to help you by providing resources to help get some answers to some of those research questions. So just to, to start off a little bit about the, the NYGNB. Uh, the, the NYGNB is a membership organization. So we, we have thousands of members all across the, the, the country. Uh, there's including global members and there's members in, in every state. And our mission as an organization is to protect, protect preserve and promote New York stories, uh, every single story we can find. And that of course includes yours. The organization was actually founded way back in 1869. And of course, we're, we're still going strong now more than 150 years later. And today the NYGNB really focuses on providing collections online that you can use to research, focusing on publications, and then events and other resources. And so we're gonna take a journey through a couple of, of these different areas. So you can see ways that you might be able to get the answer to your question from some of the resources that the NYGNB offers. One of the first things that the organization did uh, in its very, very early years was the, the start of a, a program to preserve New York records. And this included records of, of all sorts of, of different types. So one of the first things that the, the NYGNB did was look for particular records that were at risk or that weren't yet published or distributed to others. And so in October of, of 1870, for example, that they had abstracted records from the Society of Friends were the Quakers in, in New York starting in, in 1640 and began to publish those in the record our, our, our quarterly. But the types of records that we, we preserve today in, in both print and online formats are, are varied. So there's a number of religious records that are available. There's also things like unique muster rolls that you might not find uh, elsewhere that have some interpretation to them. They're, they might be transcribed or abstracted. And really the, the goal is to give you some context behind these records in addition to, to the records themselves. Every once in a while, we will, we will have collections that might be donated or that other members have found elsewhere and, and pass along to us that might abstract vital events in New York. So those are our types of records as well that we would actively seek to, to preserve and then to make accessible to, to anyone and everyone who's interested in tracing New York families. And that also includes New Yorkers who lived outside of, of New York State. And I, I always get asked the question of, well, what, you know, I live in California or I live in, <laughs> I live in Texas. What, what do you have for me? Well, one of the, the great advantages and challenges of New York research is because New York was a point of both immigration and migration, a lot of us have families from New York that pass through the state for a generation or maybe you know, two or three generations, but didn't necessarily stay for three or 400 years. And so what we try and do in our records is, is find different resources and, and collections that help to identify those materials. So this is just one example of a, of a contribution that a, a member put together where they went through a, abandoned cemeteries in California and abstracted based upon information on the stones themselves or from some of the other records, abstracted stones that were from New Yorkers. So known New Yorkers that are buried in cemeteries in, in California that are now abandoned. It might seem obscure, although when, when you think about it, if that's your ancestor, you're really grateful that Joy Burkholder went through and, and transcribed that information for you. And it just goes to show just a little bit of the, the breadth of New York that, that really comes, comes into play here. 
uh, for the most part, these particular records are from the gold rush era. So those from New York that went out to the gold rush and ended up staying in California and eventually passed away there, making sure that, that their records are preserved and that their New York stories can, can absolutely be told. Now, in, in the early days, the NYGNB would produce its record abstracts and printed publications. And I, I bring these up only to, to show you that some of the, the fundamental resources for places like, like New, New York City or, or New Amsterdam at, at that point, like the Reformed Dutch Church records, naturalization records, uh, newspaper abstracts, and, and other materials, those were originally sort of printed up and, and we, we sold them as books. Uh, these are all examples of things that you find in the online collection, so they're searchable online. But you can also find resources like this in, in libraries, so the Allen County Public Library, for example, has, has these titles that are available for you to, to research in just a, a one sort of slice of, of New York records. Now as an organization, we actively work to digitize and index collections that, that we're lucky enough to get our hands on. Uh, this, this includes anything from the family Bible that someone said, uh, went online and realized the family was from New York, so they sent us the Bible or copies of the Bible, the, the card files that might be abstracted from a, a particular religious institution, Maybe it's, it's photographs or other materials. And so we, we do a, a, a fair number of, of activities that are actually on-site digitization and indexing of materials that are, 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 are lucky enough to come through our offices. And, and this continues today. In fact, uh, we just announced last week that we are, we're adding in a new formal digitization center into our, our offices in New York City that will work to, to actively scan documents and I, I want that scanner running whenever offices are open, <laughs> digitizing and, and preserving New York records. So for, for a, a comparison of, you know, how, how are the NYGD materials different or similar to something that you might find on a commercial site like Ancestry or, or a free site like, like Family Search? I would say that the NYGNB tries to focus on sort of the collections that tell a very localized story that aren't necessarily preserved in other locations. So while a site like Ancestry might have the New York State Census and the federal census records and, and a vast number of other resources, the NYGNB is, is working to contact individual churches or individual jurisdictions that have a very localized set of records to make sure that those are preserved as well. And so a lot of the online collections that you can access online and that are available come from, from that sort of thinking. So they're a, a smaller scale of, of collection but very, very impactful if it happens to be the town or county where your New York, your New York family is living or, or where you, you need to do some of that research. So our online collections are accessible through a, a, a portal that, that exists on our website and searching is, is completely free. Uh, you do have to be a member to view some of the records, but searching is, is completely free. And you can search by first name or last name or by keyword. And you can also just take some time and, and browse through some of the records if you'd like. So accessing the, the online collections is available at nygbs.org slash online dash records. There's more than 100 different collections with 2.5 million names. And again, it's free to search and uh, you, can, you can view some of them or you don't have to be a member to view and others you, you do have to, have to be a member. But just to, to look at some of the some of the key materials here. And when we say more than 100 collections, a collection can include a lot of, of different things. So one of the, uh, of the collections that's frequently visited is the record. So I, I showed a couple of images uh, just a few moments ago that were printed from the New York Genealogical and Biographical Record. Now, this is a scholarly journal that the NYGNB has published quarterly for more than 150 years. And the record aims to include a couple of things. Uh, first, it aims to extract vital records and other types of records across New York. So these could be materials that are marriages recorded in newspapers, for example, that have been abstracted. It could be military collections. It could be, it, it could be land records. It could be a number of different things that are, are gathered together and are published in the record. And the thing to, to remember about the record and its transcriptions is that these transcriptions have been in the process of being created since the very first issue in the 1870s. And so there, there's very likely that there will be a transcription of records where the originals are now elsewhere, or not necessarily accessible, but they were published in the record, say, in, in 1910 or, or 1930 or 1940. 
and are available through the online collections and, and are main searchable there so that you can, can look through them and, and see exactly what, what you need to find. So some of these vital events, and some of these record abstracts go back to the colonial period. Other of them go, go sort of more into the 1850s, 1860s, and 1870s. But particularly in the early, early years of the record, uh, the coverage is, is primarily colonial records that, that have to do with the New Netherland period uh, and some of the Dutch period. But there are records, of course, from, from different places all, all over New York State. And more and more as, as time moved along, uh, extended into other areas of, of the state of New York. And just you know, an example of the types of things you'll find in the record. So here's a, a printer, of, it's a receipt book dating from 1804 to 1816 that has events, of course, and, and names and dates and anything that will help you to place an ancestor at a place at a certain time are the types of, of materials that might end up being, being collected and then preserved in, in the record. The other side of, of the record that is, is one of the real benefits are the compiled genealogies and the articles that actually outline how to trace a family. And this is always very exciting if you happen to find a record article about your family, because sometimes you find all the information you need with, with all the citations and the footnotes there. But it's also a very powerful learning tool. If I'm ever stuck in New York and I'm not quite sure where to head in my research, I'll go back to the table of contents of previous issues of the record or do a, a keyword search for the county or the town I'm researching in. And I'll look to see some of these examples or case studies of someone else that's actually working to trace that family. So the record is not only a database of names and dates, it's also just an entire collection of knowledge and peer reviewed knowledge for the most part. So information that's been looked at by other researchers to verify that it's correct. And I have learned more from reading record articles than, than I, I ever thought I would. As sometimes you'll learn a, a technique that was used in you know, 1970 by a researcher in a, in a record collection that I can find today in 2021 and, and find some great things. So use the record not only to find actual ancestors, but also to help you answer questions and identify some of those strategies and, and, and clues as you're going about your research. Sometimes there might be a, an article that addresses a, a broad topic, like this article in 1981 about researching the Irish born of New York City. Sometimes it's a very, very specific article where a researcher has taken time to identify whether an individual with the same name is one person or two. Again, these articles are great because they help you when you come across these own tricky situations in your own family tree and they can give you at least an idea of what one researcher did in new york as they tried to work through that specific research question so absolutely spend some time in in the record looking for the, those types of resources again the record has a searchable name index there's also a full text search and this is where the search of the record becomes powerful because the article doesn't have to be about the family you're tracing. You could do a full text search for an occupation or for a particular place or the name of a particular congregation or some other element of your family that you're trying to look at when you're, you're searching in the record. There's also a, a title and location index available. And if you happen to have a, a citation somewhere in your family or a specific record article, you can browse by the specific volume or the issue or the year. So the record is, is full of, of information and resources for you to find all about New York families. Other collections that are part of the NYGNB's online resources are collections from religious records. And at the present time, the religious records collection includes more than 120 congregations from all over New York State. And many of these transcriptions date from the early 1900s, and they include baptisms and marriages and burials and other information that you might find within a religious record. Now, we have organized the religious record collection by county. So even though the, you might just see, you know, Westchester County religious records, that's going to include multiple denominations and congregations and different faiths and beliefs within Westchester County. So when you're browsing through the list of records, you can absolutely spend some time looking county by county through some of those resources. And this is where the history of the NYGNB becomes particularly interesting. Um, in the early 1900s, the NYGNB did what, what we would consider to be a, a sort of old-fashioned campaign to preserve records. 
there was a member of the staff, uh, Royden Woodward Vosberg, who with others wrote to individual congregations and at different denominations across New York and the state and the city, and essentially inquired about their vital records and said, you know, what, what do you have for your religious records? Do you have, do you have baptisms, for example? Do you have membership lists? Where are they? What condition are they in? And then can I transcribe them? <laughs> can I publish them? And that became known as, as the Bosberg Collection, which you'll find pieces of now all over the, the country in different libraries. But you'll find that the majority of it on the NYGV website is as part of these online collections. And so Vosberg would take time to actually transcribe these records and then print and, and preserve those, those records for us so that we can access them today. And I'm always amazed when I start looking through a lot of, a lot of these different how oftentimes I'll find a transcription of a record. And when I contact that particular church today, they use the Vosberg transcription for their church records. They don't actually have access to or, or frequently use the original records themselves. But in some cases, they have the originals as well, and the Vosberg just becomes a, a nice uh, addition to it. But it, it becomes a very, very powerful resource for us because not only was Vosberg gathering the records, he was also gathering some of the context around that particular denomination and also about the records themselves. So he'll note in a couple of places where there were records that were missing or destroyed, or perhaps they might have been recorded somewhere else. So, so it's important to spend some time reading through some of these historical remarks and other resources that you'll find. Because, for example, you never know when, when a journal, for example, might include resources about you know, a, a particular congregation. And, and this is just one example where Bosberg left a clue for us for other places that we can look as we're trying to trace some of these records. And, and here we have, you know, just the example where the, the, the actual record itself exists. It's, it's, it's online. It's a family search. It's also available as part of the NYGMB resources. And you, you just begin to see a couple of the, the different types of resources that you'll find. So listing of, of memberships, for example, of people that are being received into a congregation or people who are, who are being dismissed from a congregation for various purposes, which are, are very important. You're trying to track migration from place to place to place. And so while the Vosberg collection forms sort of the foundation of the online records that are available at the NYGB's website, uh, there, there are more. We're still working on adding more and more collections online. Uh, so if you don't find it today, check back in a couple of months and, and you might very well find another a religious record that's been transcribed and, and placed online. So in addition to the, the record, in addition to the, the religious records, there is a collection of New York State periodicals that is particularly valuable in, in your research. Uh, this came to the NYGNB through the, the donation of kinship books from the, the Kelly family. Uh, if, if you've done New York research, you might have come across a abstract or a transcription of a record that's published by kinship books. Uh, the Kellys for, for 40 years plus transcribed and abstracted records from all over New York. And as, as part of that work, they published uh, different periodicals for a, a good 10, 15 year run that focused on specific, specific counties. So the Saratoga, for example, focused on Saratoga County. The Capitol focused on Albany and Rensselaer counties. And these individual periodical pages contained unique records, unique collections that were, were available at that time that largely could not have been published before, and in, in some cases are still not necessarily published elsewhere. They've only been abstracted or transcribed as, as part of these New York State periodicals. So those have been digitized and are searchable online at the NYGB's website as well. So things like, like county rec records and, and city directories and, and tax lists, all sorts of, of different things. Uh, here we see convictions, you know, records of, of, of those that are were convicted of a crime, they were abstracted as part of, of these New York State periodicals. And, and this is a newer collection that we just added in the past year. Uh, but again, just a, a small sampling of the vast amounts of, of the types of resources that are there for you, for you to take a look at. And it's really in, in materials like this where we work to identify, again, a, a person from New York at a certain place at a certain time, which helps to add to, to the overall research that we have about a specific individual or, or family member. So while, while Vosberg was doing his, his collection of religious records, and of course the, the Kellys in, the, in sort of the 1970s, 80s, and 90s were, were gathering different 
uh, different religious records and, and all sorts of, of resources. Another focus that came about were cemetery extracts. And the NYGB has a number of online cemetery uh, transcriptions from, from gravestones that were created between 1900 and 1950, though some of them were, were created more recently. And one of the key things about this is because of the time when these were done, which again, the bulk of these were done between 1900 and 1950, they document small cemeteries throughout New York that have deteriorated to the point where when you go visit them today, you oftentimes cannot read the stone. And the only way you know that you're in the right place is because you have a transcription from the NYGNB that was done in 1905, for example, that gathered and, and, and preserved that particular type of, of material. Now, one of the things to know with the cemetery extracts is most of these are browsable rather than searchable. So while they are typed, uh, it's, it's easier to, to access them when, when you're browsing. The, the OCR there is not at 100%, but, but the records are at least preserved and accessible and are able for you to, to spend some time researching through and, and finding some of those materials. So, it, and it's always great. I, I love comparing an entry. I might find something on like find a grave and go back to the cemetery extract and realize that the stone isn't readable today, but it was readable when, when that when that cemetery was was I walked, you know, a hundred plus years ago. And so at least I know it exactly what, what was there. So the cemetery extracts are another really good online resource that you can find that, that's available through the, the NYGNB. Other, other resources that are av available and accessible online, uh, just in the, in the past couple of months, we added the New York Biographical Index. Now to, to sort of give you some background on this particular index, the NYGNB had a librarian by the name of Gunther Poole, who for many, many years, in fact, for, for a, a large part of, of his life, took uh, collections from like local histories and directories and other sort of biographical books and created an index on, on, on cards of all of the entries in, in those various publications. And by, by the time Mr. Poole passed away, the, the collections had more than a million entries of different names. And these, these are records, again, these are largely from published sources. They have been gathered together and identified by Mr. Poole, and the Poole family very generously uh, allowed the NYGNB to publish the, 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 the work that, that uh, their father did in the New York Biographical Index. And so the, the collection is indexed by, by first and last name, will identify a, a year, that could be a birth year or a year of publication, uh, a, an event type, and that actually ties to the exact publication where you can find more details about that particular entry. So again, there's more than a million names in, in here. Uh, the NYGNB is, is the only place that has access to the New York Biographical Index. But I've already found all sorts of, of fun things in publications I never would have looked at because I didn't think that I had family or that the person I was researching would have an appearance in, in that particular publication. So uh, just another, another collection that you might want to keep your eye on that's at the NYGNB website is, is that New York Biographical Index. Now, I've mentioned a, a couple of times that some of the collections are available in an index, some of them are available via full text. Uh, just to sort of explain the differences in what the NYGNB has done with its online collections. We made a decision about two years ago that we had all of these images that were sitting waiting to be published online. And the time it would take to index all of those with every name and date and character, we might spend 30 years indexing before we're able to publish. And so we tried to look for other ways to make those materials accessible, which is why the full text and browse and options became available. So not every collection we have is fully indexed. We have, we have volunteers that are working to, to add more indexing to our materials. But a lot of the materials we have are, are dead indexed via sort of an OCR search or because our handwritten are still browsable. And we, we identify uh, which ones those are when you're reading through uh, information about a collection. But just so, so that you know as you're, as you're researching, some of the index materials like the record, for example, appears both in the index searches and in the full text searches. The index, because it comes from an, an every name index, the full text actually reads all the different words around an article. So it includes places, it includes dates, it includes occupations. Any word that's actually used as, uh, as part of that article is included in that full text search. So it, it, we've tried to make it as accessible and, and available to you as possible as you, as you go about your research. 
So when, when you visit the, the online collections page, you can do a, a first or last name search and you'll, you'll see sort of the different buckets of data that, that appear with your results. But before that, spend some time and actually explore some of those online collections and you'll, you'll get a better idea of, of what it means to sort of access and, and look for some of these materials. As I mentioned, a lot of the collections we've gathered together and grouped by county. So if you want Erie County Cemetery records, for example, that there's a, a collection there that has a, a variety of materials or Allegheny County Cemetery records or Albany County religious records. And that page would then have a number of, of different churches or denominations within Albany County that, that are, are part of that overall collection. So searching for, for names on the, on the site, uh, fairly straightforward. So in this example here, looking for William Roach, and at the beginning, you get the, the index results. So you see materials that are appearing from the NYGME record, appearing from the, the New York Biographical Index, which is the pool index that we just talked about, as well as, as other resources. As you scroll further down the page, this is where you, you'll see some of those full text search results. So again, the results at the top of the page are going to be indexed. So that's actually someone has looked at that page and said, this is a first name, this is a last name. The, the lower half of the search results are full text. And so those which come from, from various, you know, the, pulling out the literal text of, of, of the article or, or of that, that exact book. So you see here, most of the entries come from the NYGMB record. Some of the results came from County Corners, Abstracts in New York County, and some came from the New York Times Obituary Index. But you, you can then click through and, and actually view the image and you can print and download the images needed and do anything you need to, to, to work through and, and work with, with that particular image. So again, there's, there's a lot online, uh, there's even more to put online. Uh, the, the pipeline of records to add is, is, is endless almost when it, when it comes to, to tracing a, a New York family. But just a, an example, you know, take, take some time and, and look through some of the collections and make sure you spend some time browsing to see exactly what's there as, as part of the NYGNB's online collections. Now, I know many of us, uh, we, we love the online collections because it means I can sit at home and find, and find an ancestor, but in New York, not everything is online. And one of the, one of the challenges that the NYGNB tries to meet and, and help you with is to understand what collections are not online and what steps you need to take to actually trace and, and, and to find those specific collections. So we've talked about the record, uh, the, the, the quarterly that's published, uh, you know, again, it's quarterly, so it's four times a year. It's a great resource for, for those that are tracing New York families. While, while it's online, uh, we've also tried to do some additional uh, fun projects with the, the NYGMB record. So the NYGMB has a, a resource that's called NYGMB Labs. And what, what Labs does is, is thanks to uh, some generous donors, we basically are able to take someone who is a genealogist and someone who is a technologist and put them in a room together and let them create something. And so one of the first things that they tackled was actually uh, this project, which maps articles that are published in the NYGMB record. So this isn't a name index. This is a, a mapping tool that's completely free that allows you to select a particular location or a particular denomination and see via the different pins on the map all the different religious records that have been published in the record from that exact area. And we've actually taken and expanded that uh, in the past year to include church records and religious records that are accessible anywhere. So if they're on ancestry, if they're on family search, if they're still on site, if they are you know, published in a, in a private publication by that particular denomination, we're working to add these to the site more and more and more. So it's, it's, a, it's a living project. Uh, pins get added to the map when, when someone sits down and works and, and, and adds what they know. Uh, so it's, it's not complete by any means. So don't get discouraged if you visit the map and, and can't, can't find anything for the exact uh, denomination that, that you're interested in. But it is a great way to at least do a quick survey of what's there so that you can start to find more and more resources to search. Again, not all of these pins will be an online collection. And certainly not all the pins are at the NYGNB. Some of them point off to a, a, a site on Digital New York or Digital Humanities or another website where a particular abstract of those church records were found. 
but it's just one example of, of, a, of a publication or product the NYGND works on to help you find more New York records and really to make New York research more accessible. So I, I do a lot of work in early New York Baptist records. And I love this, this mapping project because I can go in and select the denomination and I can see all the different Baptist denominations that appear and associations that appear in New York. And I can sort of dive in particularly and start to look at the records as I begin tracing families as they're migrating across the state. So again, trying to give, to give everyone more and more tools as they work on, on tracing their New York families. Other resources the NYGME produces is a, a quarterly magazine called The New York Researcher. This magazine includes details about new records that have come online, updates about researching in New York, maybe new collections that have been discovered, and also information about what's happening at, at the NYGMB. One of the most valuable uh, sort of regular features of the New York Researcher really is the listing of records access and new online records. It is impossible <laughs> to keep up with all, all of the new records for New York that come available online. We try, <laughs> but we, we, we don't catch everything. But it's one place to look is, is a sort of regular feature that gives more and more details about what, what specific collections are, are available online, or even collections, for example, that might have been made accessible at a particular repository. And so in addition to, to that, the, the researcher, of course, includes articles that are how-to to sort of help you understand more about researching a particular part of, of New York history or, or of New York genealogy. I, I mentioned earlier the, the Kelly's and Kinship books when we were talking about resources that are available online at the NYGB website. Uh, this is one of those, one of those great projects in, in process. The, the Kelly's, as, as, as I mentioned, spent years abstracting thousands of religious records and cemeteries and account books in fact, they're, they're still at it. <laughs> they, still send, they still send titles to us of, of new uh, records that they've abstracted to publish. And they, they're, they're fellows of the NYGNB, and a, a couple of years ago, they donated their, their entire collection and their publications to the NYGNB. And so this is, a, as a project I said, it's, it's in process. Uh, we have a lot of digitization <laughs> to do here, uh, a lot of organization and, and, and further uh, publishing. But, but right now, the, the majority of their catalog they built up is available through the NYGNB. And one of the ways to start to access some of these tools is if you go to kinshipny.com, so if you go to the homepage of, of Kinship Books, at, at, at the top there, across the, the bar, you can view products, you can browse by location, you can search by, by surname, or you can learn more about the Kellys. If you click the search by surname, and over time, the Kellys would index the, the surnames that appeared in their publications. And so you can type in a, a surname, and then it will tell you exactly which of those publications that that surname appeared in. Now, I know that this works great for a more unusual surname. <laughs> it doesn't work for Smith or Taylor. <laughs> you, you, get, you get everything. But it's, but it's at least one step to trying to, to sort of tackle the 400 plus titles that are available as, as part of the kinship catalog. And when you, when you find a title you're interested in, I strongly encourage you to talk to your local public library about getting a copy of, of that publication. In many cases, they, are, they already have it or they can access it through interlibrary loan. But, but it, it's, it's just one example where your local library really becomes key as you're trying to get your hands on some of those, some of those kinship titles. Most of them are available to the NYGNB but I, I find quite often that I can go to a local library and, and get a copy of what I need, or particularly if I'm, if I'm just doing a broad search and, and trying to narrow down something that, that I might have an idea could be a match for, for what I found. But also it's important to note that in many cases, the kinship uh, sort of publication is the only time that, that particular data has been published and made accessible. So it, it, it is one of the only resources to find some, some of that information. Now, as an active publisher, the NYGMB has a lot of different types of guidebooks and, and reference tools that, that are available to you. And, and just to give you an idea of, of a couple of them that, that you, can, you can spend some time in, there, there's a few in the handout, uh, but, but one of the ones that you want to make sure that you uh, access it at a local library or, or through other means is the New York Family History Research Guide and Gazetteer. Um, this is a, a two-volume set of 868 pages. 
And when someone asks a question about New York research, I typically turn to NIFRIC, which is what we call the, the big book. Yeah, there's chapters in, in part one on major New York record types and, and how to find them. And then part two is actually, it includes a gazetteer and complete guides to every county in New York, plus New York City and, and Long Island. And so if you're trying to find a particular town or a particular settlement, or you want to know what resources exist for Tompkins County for this particular uh, topic that you're researching, Knifebrig is a great place to start. And so it's a, it's a great reference work to have access to. Uh, the, again, there, there's a print version, there's a digital version, and, and many, many libraries have a copy of Knifebrig on, on their shelf. And so I, I, the, what, what we, we love to tell people that when you ask a New York question, it's the first place we look at is NIFRIG. <laughs> we don't know the answer for off the top of our head uh, to just see if, if something is, is covered there. And other sort of reference books that, that you might want to make sure your, your local library uh, do. So the NYGNB did a, an authorized guide to the New York City Municipal Archives. So really the, the goal in this case was to look at materials beyond birth, marriage, and death records, information that, that has genealogically relevant collections, bodies and transit records, court reports, other, other resources. And we're, we're also currently working with the New York State Archives for a guide to resources for genealogists and family historians of, of the New York State Archives as well. So, that, so we'll, we'll have the New York City Municipal Archives and the New York State Archives a publication, which hopefully will be out uh, in, in the next uh, six, six or, or eight months or so. And, and then recent publications include a, a guidebook on tracing immigrants, from the early national period to about 1924, uh, talking about, about the records and, and the people, uh, different particular immigrant groups that came through and some of the strategies for tracing them that, that again, would have traveled through the, the Port of New York. And the NYGMB also has a county guide uh, from, for, for every county in New York. Uh, many of these came, originated from the, the records that are in NIFRIG, but there's also an online version as well, and they oftentimes will include updates and corrections and, and other resources. So just uh, tools that, that, again, exist for you as you, as you go about uh, tracing your, your New York families. The NYGMB uh, publishes a, an e-news, so it usually comes out a couple of times a month. This is where you can learn more about new, new collections that are, that are online, not only from, from the NYGMB, but also elsewhere learn resources about upcoming events, reprogramming that's coming up. Uh, the the e-news is completely free and is, is a, an email that, that you get that, again, will just give you some of the, the updates that are, are all about New York research to help you keep up with, with what's coming and what's new as you're, as you're working to trace your New York families. Also on, on our website, there's a number of online articles. There, there's a, a research form where members can talk and interact with one another and ask queries and, and have discussions based upon a specific location that someone might be researching in. So there, there's a number of, of sort of online tools and articles that exist as well under the tools and resources tab on the NYGMB's website. And here's just one of those examples of the online county guide that's available that identifies links to major repositories and other record collections to help you navigate through some of these materials. Now, I know you're, you're on a webinar right now <laughs> or, or listening after, uh, but the NYGMB also offers a number of free webinars and, and other programs that you can also take, take part in. So many of our webinars are recorded and are available later for members of the NYGMB, but webinars include a, a, a vast amount of, of subjects. So sometimes it's, it's a, a webinar about a specific topic like New York birth records to really, really uh, dial in on that specific topic. Sometimes it's a, it's a collection about a, a particular a county or a particular place in New York or strategy that, that you might need to, to know. And so just, just keep in mind of upcoming webinars that, that occur. Again, usually the webinars, when they broadcast, it's completely free to attend and take part and, and ask questions. And some of the videos are available later on our YouTube channel or, or in other locations. So I, I've talked a lot about things that are online or sort of books and resources that, that you can use. But one of the other things that the NYGNB really uh, strives to do is to help you get your hands on the records themselves. And for the past 18 months, it's been challenging. <laughs> it's getting a little easier now. Uh, and, and that is for our research tours. And so we offer tours and sort of hands-on experiences in Albany, as well as in New York City at the New York Public Library. 
and elsewhere to, to look through some of those collections. And so th this is where a lot of people have great finds for their New York families is when they, they can visit the New York City archives with the, with the NYGNB. And we're, we're happy to, to give you some, some handholding and some help as you, as you learn more and more about, about tracing uh, New York families. And we, we go everywhere. Uh, we, we, go to, we go to Salt Lake City, the family's library there. Uh, maybe one day we'll come to the Allen County Public Library <laughs> and spend some time uh, with, with members researching in, in the materials there. But really, it's we do everything we can to to make sure that that we help you understand how to look look and, and find some of those New York records that aren't available online. So, the, the best way to take advantage of some of the resources at the, the NYGMB's website has a number of free resources. There's a link in the handout to that page that has general subject guides to understanding New York vital records and understanding. How, how to tackle you know, New York research problems in, in specific periods. But you can also just visit our website to, to look, look at the blog that we, that we publish that has all sorts of, of, of articles. Whenever new records become available online, uh, whether it's at the NYGNB or elsewhere, we'll absolutely spend some time writing about it to, to let you know the best way to access it and how to use it so that, so that you're able to, to search in those new records. Uh, that there is so much available <laughs> for New York and so much of that is not online. And so when something comes up, we, we wanna make sure that everybody knows about it and, and knows how to, how to use it. So I, just uh, very quickly, uh, I know I've mentioned some things are available to NYGNB members. Uh, so, so membership is, is what gets you access to things like the record and, and the researcher um, and advocacy to, to protect New York records access and, and some of those online collections. But you can, you can absolutely start uh, by by exploring the free resources that are that are available on on the NYGB's website, so spend some time on the online collections. Again, there's you know you don't have to be a member to browse. You can absolutely spend as as much time as you as you want uh, sort of browsing some of those collections. But re remember and keep in mind that the the one of the real benefits or some of the hidden gems in the NYGB materials are some of those collections that were preserved in the you know 1900s. Of, of resources that aren't available anymore, of cemeteries that are, are, have long been abandoned and deteriorated, and the NYGME was there making transcriptions and, and, and publishing them. So, so it's one thing that the people, I think, often overlook when they start looking at the NYGME's resources, but there, there's an awful lot there for you to, to discover. And then, and then second, uh, it's impossible to, to answer every New York question. <laughs> And sometimes uh, we'll get a question that's a bit tricky and take, take some time to do some research. One of the, the main uh, goals of the NYGNB is not only to help you actually find the record, so, so give, it, give it to you online, but more to, to work through the process of discovering what record exists to help you to answer your research question. New York has a, a number of, of complications when it comes to accessing particular types of records. You know, towns in New York all have a town historian and sometimes that town historian has a wealth of information about the town. Other times they might, they might not. And so we, we try and work through all of those, those various differences to try and help you to, to answer that New York question to the best of our ability. And we, we learn along, along the way. You know, I, I probably learned something new about New York research every day <laughs> in, in my job, which, which is fantastic. Uh, there's no shortage of things to learn about tracing New York families and, and New York genealogy. So with that, uh, I'm happy to, to answer questions about, about tracing New York families, about the NYGNB. Um, I, 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 will, I will try and, and answer what I can, uh, but if, if I can't, you might, I have NYFRIG handy. So I, I might pick, pick up NYFRIG and ask there, or I might ask you to, to email us directly to, to get an answer, but ha happy to take some questions.